Kenya's social, political and economic development depends on the efficient functioning of institutions of governance and the cohesive nature of its citizens. A robust framework on dispute resolution and administration of justice is key in establishing confidence in the citizens of the country. Investors, on the other hand, will only put their money where institutions of governance are in place and functioning properly. An investor seeking to invest in this country will, among other things, find out whether in the event that he gets into a dispute, a legal dispute, that matter will be resolved quickly, but also fairly, and that there will be no influence at all in the determination of that matter. The judiciary is one of the three arms of government and the key institution that is responsible for the efficient administration of justice in the country. Mechanisms for dispute resolution existed even before colonial rule in Kenya, with communities having established systems where village elders, headmen and chiefs were entrusted with the task of resolving disputes. The advent of colonial rule in the late 19th century marked the beginning of a formal legal system in Kenya based on a tripartite division of subordinate courts, that is, the native courts, the Muslim courts, and those staffed by administrative officers and magistrates. However, the judicial officers of these courts were appointees of the administration. The 1963 independence constitution finally marked the beginning of an independent and impartial judiciary. The judges were to be appointed by an independent judicial service commission. Inherited by successive governments, the principles of independence of the judicial service commission and the judiciary were merely on paper. The president had the powers to appoint the judges and magistrates. It was subject to very many criticisms. Uh, the secret nature of this uh, sourcing and this appointment, uh, people used to say that not the best had been appointed. Uh, people used to say that uh, only the politically correct guys have been appointed. With the promulgation of the new constitution, the Judicial Service Commission was established as a constitutional body under Article 171.1 of the 2010 Constitution of Kenya, thereby realigning its roles and mandate to conform to the letter and spirit of the new constitution period before the constitutional reform process, uh, the government set up a task force for the reforms in the judiciary, which I had the honor of chairing. This report, as we were getting views, was running concurrently with the work of the um, Committee of Experts on Constitutional uh, Review. And so when we finished our work, the Committee of Experts more or less adopted all the recommendations with regard to JSC into the Constitution on the Judicial Service Commission. The diverse member composition of the post-2010 Judicial Service Commission consists of the Chief Justice as a chairperson of the Commission, one Supreme Court judge elected by the judges of the Supreme Court, one Court of Appeal judge elected by the judges of the Court of Appeal, one High Court judge and one magistrate one a woman and one a man, elected by the members of the Association of Judges and Magistrates, the Attorney General, two advocates, one a woman and one a man, each of whom has at least 15 years' experience, elected by the members of the statutory body responsible for the professional regulation of advocates, one person nominated by the Public Service Commission, and one woman and one man who are not lawyers to represent the public appointed by the President with the approval of the National Assembly. And Chief Registrar of Judiciary as Secretary to the Commission. The Commission has a mandate under the Constitution and we are generally in charge of all the human resource in the judiciary. Uh, what the Commission does is that uh, it's in charge of the recruitment, welfare and uh, all issues that pertain to the judges and the staff. The Judicial Service Commission's first mandate is to recommend to the President persons for appointment as judges. For the first time in Kenya's history, 
the appointment of the Chief Justice was an independent, non-partisan process that saw candidates for the position of Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice, and judges of the High Court interviewed by the Judicial Service Commission in full glare of the media and the public. Dr. Willie Munyuoki Mutunga emerged as the best candidate for Chief Justice position and was formally presented to the President for appointment as the first Chief Justice under the 2010 Constitution of Kenya. Note that former President Kibaki had to rescind Justice Visram's appointment as Chief Justice because he had done it without involving the JSC. The appointments were done recognizing the need for gender balance, diversity and show the face of Kenya as expected by the Constitution. For the first time, a Supreme Court was also established as the highest court of the land. The second mandate of the JSC is to review and make recommendations on the conditions of service of judges and judicial officers other than their remuneration and the staff of the judiciary. The Commission has continuously engaged the government for adequate budgetary allocations to effectively finance judiciary operations. In the 2015-2016 financial year, the Commission successfully negotiated for judiciary budget to be increased to 9 billion shillings, up from 3 billion. We needed the judiciary to be able to get the kind of financial resources that it would need to be able to render services to the people of Kenya. Under the Constitution 2010, it's now an expanded judiciary in terms of the introduction of more courts that did not exist before, uh, like the Supreme Court, the Land and Environment Court, the Employment and Labor Relations Court, the introduction of more administrative offices, and of course there's the constitutional edict that the judiciary must ensure that there are courts in every county. In 2015, the Commission conducted suitability interviews for 262 magistrates, out of which 117 were promoted to various cadres. In addition, 1,500 staff underwent suitability interviews at the Commission, and out of which 484 of the staff have since been promoted. The third mandate is to appoint, receive complaints against, investigate and remove from office or otherwise discipline registrars, magistrates, other judicial officers and other staff of the judiciary in the manner prescribed by an Act of Parliament. Between 2014 and 2015, the Commission had and successfully concluded over 62% of the disciplinary cases that it had received. Cases of corruption have also been dealt with expeditiously when and where they've occurred. Parties are entitled to complain because judicial authority resides in the people and the constitution commands us to act in a particular way. So when we fail, people complain to the Judicial Service Commission and we look at the complaint. If it is frivolous, we dismiss. If there is merit in it, we deal with it, including calling the complainant to come and substantiate and also asking the judge or magistrate to respond to the complaint. We make a determination. If it goes against what is acceptable under the constitution, if it's gross misconduct, misbehavior, or offends our code of conduct, then we may recommend to uh, the president, former tribunal, for, to start the proceedings for removal. Uh, but for magistrates and um, cadres or staff, we have the authority to discipline, including interdicting, uh, suspending, and dismissal. The fourth mandate is to prepare and implement programs for the continuing education and training of judges and judicial officers. The Judicial Service Commission has therefore established the Judiciary Training Institute that offers various training programs and seminars, public lectures, research, and other forms of discourses targeting all cadres of judiciary staff. This has empowered the JSC and its staff to become more efficient in the delivery of services to Wananchi. The last mandate is to advise the national government on improving the efficiency of the administration of justice. 
On the advice of the Commission, various administrative positions have been created. These include the Chief Registrar, Regional Registrars and other Directors who assist in the management of various courts in the country. In terms of infrastructure, there's a lot of construction going on. I don't think there's any county in Kenya today where either a new court is not being built or an old court is not being refurbished or a high court is being set up or a court of appeal is being envisaged. Improving infrastructure and bringing justice closer is a key achievement towards enhancing efficiency and administration of justice in Kenya. Over 130 new courts have been built and old courts have been refurbished. In this process we have uh, funding from the government of Kenya. We also have uh, a loan from the World Bank under the Judiciary Performance Improvement Project. The spaces within which we work ought to reflect the dignity of the institution. And so we've put in a lot of effort in that regard and we're hoping that by 2018 we should all be able to look back and be proud of what we shall have achieved. The Commission has gone further to devolve the Court of Appeal in Malindi, Kisumu and Nyeri. The Commission has put in place an elaborate plan to have a High Court station in each county. Under the new Commission, the number of judges has gone nearly fivefold. Corresponding with the expansion of courts, nearly every corner of this country we have courts coming up. They've dealt with issues of integrity, corruption, very, very seriously. JSC has brought in a lot of changes that those who care to see would say that they are changes that um, uh, cannot be compared with the past JSC for the years um, it was there put together. Mm -hmm.